Hi history lovers and welcome or welcome back to the channel where I bring you new videos every week on all aspects of the past. Today's video from History Calling is a little more whimsical than some of my others because we're going to be asking is Friday the 13th really unlucky and looking at the history of this famous or rather infamous date. Why is it associated with doom? Is there any evidence that you really should be worried about it? And what do Jesus, the Knights Templar, Geoffrey Chaucer, an Apollo space mission, and Loki from the Avengers have to do with it? Stay tuned to find out. Please remember to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel with notifications switched on so that YouTube lets you know every time I upload. You can also follow me on Instagram where my username is History Calling, and there's a link for that in the description box below. The fear of Friday the 13th is so widespread nowadays that it actually has its own word, which is ironically rather terrifying to pronounce, and which comes from the Greek words for Friday and 13. If you suffer from a fear of this date, then you have a nasty case of Paraskevi decatriophobia, and I don't want to hear about it in the comments if I mispronounce that, because it was hands down the worst word I've ever had to attempt for you. <laughs> but where does this fear come from, and how far back can we trace it? The fear of Friday the 13th actually seems to be a combination of two other superstitions which have been melded together to form one super superstition. These are a fear of the number 13 and a fear of Friday, or at least a belief that it's an unlucky day. Let's look at the number 13 first, the fear of which is called triskaidekaphobia, another Greek combo, this time of the words for three and 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 ten, plus of course the word phobia. So it literally means three and ten phobia, or thirteen phobia. When hunting around the internet, you'll find all sorts of explanations as to why this number is felt to be unlucky. One story is that it comes from Norse mythology and an incident involving the prankster Loki, now made famous thanks to Tom Hiddleston's portrayal of him in the Marvel Cinematic Universe films. According to the original story, Loki arrived at a dinner at Valhalla as the 13th and uninvited guest and through his shenanigans tricked the blind god Hodor, feel free to indulge in some Game of Thrones jokes here, into killing his brother Baldur, who was the favoured son of King Odin of Asgard and his wife Queen Freak. We'll come back to this queen in a minute, by the way. Baldur's death then initiated the fall of the gods, known as the Ragnarok. Again, you can see the links to the Thor films here. Another explanation given is that 13 refers to the number of guests at the Last Supper in the New Testament, eaten the day before Jesus was crucified. These guests were Jesus himself, plus his 12 disciples, including the treacherous Judas Iscariot, who was supposedly the 13th guest to arrive. Having checked the Bible, though, I don't see any reference to Judas arriving separately from the others, but do let me know if I've missed something. Then we have the claims of numerologists, who argue that the number 12 is perfect. Think of the 12 months of the year, 12 days of Christmas, 12 zodiac signs, and the aforementioned 12 disciples of Jesus. And that the number 13 is therefore unlucky because it is beyond perfection, and not in a good way. Whether you believe in it or not, this superstition has undoubtedly affected the world around us, including architecture. An article in the New York Times from June 1977 said that, Many, if not most, high-rise residences in New York are 13-less. On West End Avenue, on East 86th Street, in Greenwich Village, buildings old, buildings new, their elevators read 11, 12, 14. The fear, apparently, was that apartments on the 13th floor would be harder to rent or sell. I'd be fascinated to hear in the comments from any listener who lives in a high-rise building, whether in New York or elsewhere, if this is true in your experience. Does your building have a 13th floor, and if it doesn't, do you know how old it is? You might also be interested to know that New York's Flatiron Building and the Empire State Building do both have 13th floors, so we can be sure that not everyone buys into this fear. I've read too that the French dislike having 13 at a dinner table, but I've seen no empirical proof of that. Perhaps if I have any French listeners, or listeners with French connections, they can let me know if that story is true as well. There are also cases in which those who believe in the superstition will point to infamous events which have some association with the number 13, and cite them as apparent evidence of its dangers. 
One of the best known of these was the Apollo 13 lunar mission. This actually launched on Saturday the 11th of April 1970, albeit at 8.13pm, but soon suffered a near catastrophic explosion whilst in space. This disaster almost killed its three-man crew and put pay to any ideas they had of going to the moon. However, they all made it back to Earth, and so, if anything, we might say that they were incredibly lucky, rather than the reverse. There's even a hit movie starring Tom Hanks and Kevin Bacon about their experience, which I'll leave linked below for you. As for how long reasons such as these have been given as evidence for this superstition, according to Steve Rood in his book The Penguin Guide to the Superstitions of Britain and Ireland, also linked below, while mythological and biblical events may be used to support a fear of 13, it was only in the 1690s that a superstition around having that number of people at a dinner table began to appear in the documentary evidence, and only in the mid-19th century that a more widespread fear of the number started to become commonplace. People weren't generally afraid of it 2,000 years ago. The evidence has just been retroactively found and fitted to the superstition. So that takes care of the number 13, but what about Fridays? Why are they unpopular, despite being the start of the weekend for most of us, and should I have chosen a different day to upload my YouTube videos? As with 13, there are numerous supposed explanations for some people's lukewarm feelings towards Fridays. Funnily enough, though, it wasn't always looked upon with suspicion. Remember King Odin's wife, Frigg, Queen of Asgard? Well, she inspired the English word Friday, it literally means Day of Freak, and was a powerful goddess of love and fertility in Norse mythology. With the coming of Christianity, though, these pagan connections were no longer popular, and the Queen's story was altered to make her a mountain-dwelling witch who planned her upcoming evil every Friday. Returning to the Bible, Jesus was, of course, crucified on a Friday, though somewhat incongruously, that day is now referred to as Good Friday. I've also read some pretty ludicrous and utterly unsupported theories that things like Eve giving Adam the apple, their son Cain killing his brother Abel, and the Great Flood all happened on a Friday, but please pay no attention to these tall tales. Writing over 1300 years after the time of Jesus in his most famous work, The Canterbury Tales, English author Geoffrey Chaucer said of some misfortune which had befallen his characters that, and on a Friday fell all this mischance. Then, in 1592, a pamphlet entitled Green's Groat's Worth of Wit, published in London and supposedly written by another English author, Robert Green, included the line, The fox made a Friday face, counterfeiting sorrow. Literary references such as these only added to the general perception that it is somehow a bad day, as did its traditional use as the hangman's day in Britain and later America. So we've established that a dislike of the number 13 and of Fridays has been around for centuries, but when did these two superstitions combine into an all-out fear of Friday the 13th? Well, the answer is not that long ago, actually. The genesis of Friday the 13th as a day of bad luck can only be traced back to the second half of the 19th century, making it all the Victorians' fault. Funnily enough, it may well have been an attempt by a group of people to disprove the superstitions around the number 13 and Fridays, along with many others, which inadvertently gave rise to the Friday the 13th beliefs. In 1882, William Fowler of New York City started a society known as the 13 Club. Its purpose was to disprove as many superstitions as it could. It had 13 members, held dinners on the 13th of a month, with 13 courses, and of course, the 13 guests at the table. According to an article in the Los Angeles Herald, written to celebrate the club's 13th anniversary in 1895, at the dinners of the club, it has been a regular custom to spill salt, to cross forks, and to break looking glasses, and its initiation fee was $1.13. More interestingly still, this article explains that the club had taken aim at the two separate superstitions surrounding 13 and Fridays, but makes no mention of there being a third fear specifically of Friday the 13th. Instead, in their eagerness to combat as many superstitions as possible, the club had met when it could on that date, which only occurs between one and three times in a year by the way, but only because this allowed them to kill two birds with one stone. There doesn't seem to have been a particular fear of the combination of that day and number in earlier decades. 
It may well be, then, that the actions of the Thirteen Club accidentally made Friday the 13th a point of superstition, particularly as the popularity of the club spread and new branches of it began to meet in other cities, including London. They were successful in other areas, though, and were credited by the LA Herald with helping to encourage executions to be carried out on days other than Fridays, so that by 1895 it was no longer known as Hangman's Day. Certainly within a few decades of the original club's creation, the idea that this date was cursed somehow had taken on a life of its own, and soon the day was being used in all sorts of ways and blamed for all kinds of mishaps, current and historical. In 1907, author Thomas Lawson published his book entitled Friday the 13th, which only fueled the fires of suspicion further, and by 1926, the Hull Daily Mail newspaper in England could report that the crew of a French tugboat had refused to carry out their dangerous job of recovering gold from a shipwreck on Friday the 13th, and the task had therefore been put off until the following day. The paranoia around the date, and its use for financial gains, has only increased in the decades since. In 1980, the Friday the 13th horror film franchise was launched, and in 2003, Dan Brown's book, The Da Vinci Code, noted that some of the Knights Templar were arrested on Friday the 13th of October 1307, a fact which has since been used as another piece of pseudo-evidence to support the idea that there is something wrong with the date. So fierce has the paranoia around Friday the 13th become that there have even been studies to try to establish if it affects humans in any tangible way. One oft-quoted article in the British Medical Journal from December 1993 suggested that there was a 52% higher risk of a traffic accident on that day. However, the authors freely admitted that the data sets they used were very limited, their statistical analysis was very simple, and the whole tone of the article strongly suggests that it was intended to be a bit of tongue-in-cheek fun for the BMJ's Christmas edition. They only looked at a handful of Friday the 13ths, using traffic data for a little bit of the M25 motorway and stats from some shopping centres and hospitals, then compared that data to similar data from one week earlier in each case. It was far from an exhaustive study, nor was it meant to be. In 2008, another report came out, this time from the Dutch Centre for Insurance Statistics. It found that there are fewer accidents, fires and thefts on Friday the 13th, though the value of goods lost on that day was slightly higher, and contrary to the BMJ article, concluded that driving is actually slightly safer. What I take from all of this is that you can argue Friday the 13th is luckier, unluckier, or just the same as any other day, depending on what evidence you want to look at, and indeed how loosely you want to define the word evidence. There is nothing conclusive either way, and I'm certainly not worried about having my videos come out on a Friday, though I don't doubt that if this one, released on Friday the 13th of May 2022, doesn't do particularly well, people will cite that as evidence of the curse. Let me know in the comments below if you are superstitious about Friday the 13th, or indeed anything else, and if so, why. I'll be back next week with a new video, and until then, keep learning.